This video presents the paper, on the evaluation of force feedback augmented teleoperation of excavator-like mobile manipulators. Mining is an essential activity on a global scale where the harsh, inhospitable, and dangerous environments are usually the norm. In the past few decades, we have witnessed a growing effort to improve working conditions for operators, especially with the adoption of procedures to decrease stress and to increase overall safety. An important step towards full automation of mining activity is teleoperation, which aims to extend human capabilities to manipulate remote objects and operate equipment in hazardous environments. An effective approach to improve performance in teleoperation tasks consists in using haptic feedback. In the literature of robotics and virtual reality, haptics is defined as interactions of forces and torques between humans, robots, and environments remote or simulated in their various combinations. This paper reports part of the results of the project Advanced Teleoperation of Mining Equipment. The project aims to develop a computational framework to enable teleoperation more efficiently and securely, using three-dimensional reconstruction, haptic interfaces, data visualization, planning, and active vision techniques. Communication delays are not in the scope of this paper, but just for the viewer's knowledge, the operator acts in the remote environment through a low-latency network connection using a haptic interface. The main goal is to implement and compare three force feedback strategies, to choose the one that fits this teleoperation task most efficiently. The NASA Task Load Index NASA TLX, measures the efforts of volunteers to teleoperate the platform, to assess the effects of force feedback on the human-machine relationship. We considered the excavator model composed of the following parts, the base or landing gear, the upper structure including the cabin, and the manipulator mounted in the frontal region. The manipulator is considered a separate entity that contains the boom, the stick and the bucket. We model the manipulator as a 3 degrees of freedom planar mechanism with three revolute joints, being theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3, as shown in the figure, while the skid steer mobile base allows for both rotation and translation during the excavator operation. The modeling of this robotic excavator takes the mobile base and the manipulator as two independent platforms. And, the inertial and robot frames are given. The skid steer kinematic model converts linear and angular reference velocities into command signals sent to the wheel motors, moving the base on the XIYI plane. To command the mobile base, the operator uses a non-haptic joystick to define the reference velocities. To control the manipulator, we use a 6 degrees of freedom haptic joystick, in which two joints are mechanically locked, allowing movements in the four remaining joints. The first joint, theta w, is associated with the rotation of the mobile base, while the next three coplanar joints, theta s, theta e, theta p, are related to the planar movement of the manipulator. Only the first three joints are actuated to provide force feedback to the operator. The kinematic modeling of both excavator manipulator and haptic device follows the denovit haderberg convention, which models the end effector pose from the device joint's positions. The differential kinematics problem of a serial manipulator consists of finding the end effector velocities given the positions and velocities of the joints. The relationship between the joints and end effector velocities is expressed by the above equation. To move the manipulator's end effector to the desired position, we used the kinematic control law based on the homogeneous transformation matrix, HTM, whose objective is given by the above equation. Both desired, rotation matrix and bi-dimensional position vector, are defined by the operator through the haptic device. So, the control block diagram is given. And, the control input is expressed as. The vector of control inputs is given by the position and orientation errors between actual and desired HTM, which is applied to the controller expressed by DLS inverse of the manipulator's Jacobian matrix multiplied by a positive definite gain matrix. We propose three operation mode configurations to evaluate the benefits brought to the human-machine interaction. C1, operating the mobile manipulator without any immersive feedback. This operation mode represents a classical design of teleoperation without interactivity and force feedback. To decouple the commands sent to the robot, we have two buttons on the non-haptic joystick configured to permute between mobile base and manipulator control. C2, producing force feedback in the haptic device when the bucket interacts with objects. To improve the sense of immersion of a human operator remotely located from the task, we propose the use of haptic interfaces to provide a compelling sensation that the operator is directly interacting with the real environment with the excavator's bucket. This strategy is shown in the diagram. The top three blocks of the diagram are an overview of the control diagram shown earlier. 
Since there is no force sensor in the manipulator end effector, we use the principle of virtual work to estimate such information. Thus, we utilize the torques applied to the revolution joints through static analysis and the DLS inverse. This relationship is only valid for the static equilibrium, but presents a good approximation when the equilibrium condition is not satisfied. The vector of interaction forces is normalized according to the joystick limitations and, then, we can estimate the force applied to manipulator end effector, which must be transmitted to the operator through the haptic interface. According to the decoupled strategy of modeling the excavator as a planar manipulator installed on a mobile base, we only command the joints theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3 to control the manipulator pose on the plane. To provide 3D force feedback, we also estimate the Y component of interaction forces applied to the end effector using the torque on the joint of the manipulator base. Then, we compute torque of haptic devices waste sent to the haptic joint using the Y component of normalized interaction forces as follows. C3 combining force feedback with an attractive force guiding to the excavation deposit site. This configuration can be especially useful in precision mining, where the operator must follow a specific task sequence with predefined locations to dig and spoil material to maximize productivity. An attractive potential field generates forces in the haptic device to guide the operator's movements while performing a desired task. Planning via artificial potential represents the robot by a point that moves under the influence of a potential field, obtained as the superposition of an attractive potential to the goal and repulsive potentials from obstacles. We use only the attractive potential in our strategy, generated by the excavation and deposit boxes, according to the task. At each robot configuration, the artificial force generated by the potential is defined as the negative gradient of the potential, which indicates the direction of local motion. As can be seen in the diagram, the main difference between the operation modes C2 and C3 is the block of obtaining the forces sent to the haptic device. Now, this force is given by the sum of the interaction forces with the attractive ones, multiplied by alpha and beta, respectively, whose values are weighted gains to define the individual contributions of the guiding and interaction forces in the force feedback sent to the operator. Over again, to provide 3D force feedback, we use the alignment error between the robot XR axis and the position of excavation deposit sites. A proportional control, added with a damping component proportional to the velocity of the waste joint of the haptic device, uses the alignment error to compute the torque in this joint. Finally, the attractive potential field is switched between the desired sites by pressing load or unload button according to the task. To evaluate the teleoperation approach, we build a mobile manipulator using two commercial robotic devices. To perform ground movements during the excavator operation, we use the Pioneer 3AT robot as a mobile base for the robotic manipulator. The Pioneer 3AT is a skid steer four-wheel drive robot ideal for all-terrain operation. We attached the manipulator Canova Gen 3 to the Pioneer 3AT to get a robotic platform similar to an excavator. The Canova Gen 3 is a robotic arm with 7 degrees of freedom. To keep the similarity with the excavator, we lock some of the joints to maintain the arm's motion restricted to a plane. The experiments were performed indoor and consisted of using the haptic device and joystick to operate the excavator to perform the task of transferring different materials between two boxes, similar to an ore loading unloading operation. The first experiment consists in evaluating how users can improve their performance when using force feedback to operate the excavator. We use the operation modes C1, C2 and C3 to make this comparison. A total of six volunteers participated and answered the NASA TLX form to measure the workload produced by each configuration scenario. We observe that the proposed methods tend to assist in mental and temporal demands, but they require more physical effort from the operator, since the haptic device transmits forces to the user. In general, the effort level, which is the sum of mental and physical effort to perform the task, increases as performance decreases. Likewise, immersive feedback brings a greater level of frustration to the operator as performance decreases. Through workload intensity results, we can see that most subjects complain the workload has increased, except for subject 2 who already has experience with similar platforms. The result of subject 6, who also has some experience, shows that there is a small increase in intensity. For those who are inexperienced, this difference is usually more observed. Another way of comparing the effects of force feedback is by evaluating the mechanical stress produced in the excavator during the load and unload process. 
In this way, we analyze the module of the force at the bucket during the execution of the task for all configurations. We observe some force peaks for C1 which does not occur in C2 and C3 due to the force feedback. These peaks may cause mechanical stress on the bucket which reduces the life cycle of the device. In this way, the force feedback has a positive impact on the conservation of the mechanism, reducing these peaks by approximately 70%. Power consumption is another important factor that we deal with. We measure the power consumption during all the experiments and observe the impact of each one for all configurations. According to the table, C3 has a mean consumption of approximately 8% lower than C1, which can represent a significant cost reduction in real applications. Configuration C1 also has a higher consumption peak than the other configurations which is extremely undesirable since they may cause electrical instabilities in the system. To analyze how the force feedback is working when bucket interacts with objects, we estimate the force applied to the end effector and compute torques sent to the haptic device. In this experiment, we purposely collided twice the bucket in the box, doing a diagonal top-down movement. As noted in the graphics, two peaks are corresponding to these two interactions. As expected, our system generates two peaks of force in the haptic device providing the sense of collision. We also carried out additional tests to validate the operation modes and evaluate the usability of each configuration, as well as the possible consequences to the system when using the C1. The absence of force feedback may cause serious damage to the excavator, as can be seen in this video, where its bucket is completely broken in one of our experiments with the C1 configuration. Regarding the C2 configuration, we simulate real excavation situations by burying a hard object in the excavation box. The video shows how the operator can discover this object, even if she he is unable to see it. The following is a test to validate the guidance system developed in this paper. This paper presented a framework for the teleoperation of excavators with immersive interaction of forces between environment and user. Our experiments showed that feedback serves as a force restriction, preventing the operator to overstress the manipulator. An advantage of the force feedback system is that the manipulator undergoes less stress. During the experiments, we could verify that the use of the system results in a reduction of peak forces applied to the manipulator. The NASA TLX results showed that force feedback improved operators' mental and temporal demands, but physical decreased. In general, the effort level, which is the sum of mental and physical effort to perform the task, increases as performance decreases. Consequently, the frustration level was higher. Another significant contribution of this methodology is the saving of 8% in energy consumption spent by the platform, in addition to reducing the peak forces applied to the manipulator by up to 70%. We appreciate the support provided by the following institutions. Thanks for watching.